to another tutorial with the Essentials Club. If you're new around here, I'm Maddie. Today I'm going to do a bucket hat 2.0 tutorial. Thank you all so much for the amazing response on the first video of this. You all loved it so, so much. You guys are honestly so creative. I was beyond impressed by how all of your hats have been turning out and even like the extra miles that you would take. Some of you are adding straps, some of you are embroidering little beautiful details into it and just experimenting and it was really cool. I love seeing how you all approach it differently. So keep tagging me if you do follow this or even the original one as well because I always love seeing your outcomes. So the first version showed you how to do like a double sided brim and just a single sided top section and two questions that kept coming up which I'm going to answer in this video is how to do it fully double sided and then how to fray the edges as that was one of the styles that I did and I didn't really explain how so I'll show you in detail how to do that in this video. One thing that I just really really want to make clear as I know a lot of you kept commenting that the pattern was too small and I have a feeling that you might not have printed it to scale as I'm based in Australia so I have set up this template to fit on an A4 size paper. I know a lot of you have a different size format paper that you guys print onto so make sure when you print it's a priority to set to a scale of 100% and that will make sure that the measurements print out properly. I've also put a little scale on the pattern to make sure that when it does print out that you can measure it and double check that it is to scale. Initially I went forward with this just having it as a one size fits all but obviously we all have different size heads so I have since then created a section on the pattern where you can add or take more say if you want to change the sizing of it. I'll put the measurement of my head below and I just use the regular fit. I have made one of these hats for a friend who has a larger head and I just added on that extra section which you'll see There'll also be a link in the description for you to download this pattern. There is a print friendly version and also a version with measurements in case you don't have a printer and you can actually draw it out yourself as I understand we don't all have access to printers. I have made this pattern free but if you do by any chance appreciate me doing this I have put some donation links on the blog post page which is where you download this pattern so feel free to donate there if you appreciate going through this process and me helping you out through it. Radio, so let's jump into the steps of making your own bucket hat. The essentials that we'll need to get started with this is obviously the pattern. Like I said, it is on my blog. I will put the link in the description, which you can download it from, and you'll just need to print this out and cut it out. These end up printing out half the side because we end up cutting this on the fold, which means these will end up being double the size. So don't get scared if you print these and think that these are way too small. They are, and we're going to cut them bigger. And then we'll also need some pins. This is optional, but you can have some fabric chalk if you want to draw around the pattern first before cutting. Otherwise, you can just jump straight into cutting it, so you'll need some scissors for that. I've got some regular scissors as well as some pinking shear scissors. The zigzag style cut stops it from fraying, so I'm going to do that obviously on the sections where I don't want it to fray, and then I'll use my regular scissors where I do want it to fray. You'll need some material. I've honestly made this from so many different things, from old bags, just cutoffs from old t-shirts. And you don't really need that much fabric, but if you are getting new fabric, half a meter is plenty enough as that will allow you enough for the hat and maybe even some little leftover scrunchies and whatnot. I would suggest for these fabrics, nothing too flimsy as it is a bucket hat and we want it to kind of have some kind of form so it can sit up. The way that we end up doubling it helps it become thicker and more sturdier. If you're going for the frayed look, you'll need something that obviously frays well. So something like cotton, linen, or denim is a great option. I've even used canvas bags and they fray nicely as well. In my first video, I even used a towel because they come up really cute, especially if you're wearing them to the beach. So that's a great option as well. Pretty much anything that isn't flimsy is perfect. Radio, so now that we have all the essentials and a nice little overview of what we'll be doing, let's jump into the steps of making our own bucket hat. I'm actually gonna have plain material on one side and then the pattern material on the other side. So it has a full double effect and it's like a two in one, which is really fun. I would suggest if you have a nice clean bit of material like this, starting at one side and kind of working your way across so that you don't waste any material. I am extremely lazy and I haven't ironed anything. So this is nice and crinkled. It's honestly a miracle that I have put any makeup on and got changed today. So please understand that you're probably never going to see me iron anything. But I'm going to cut all of these out with my pinking shears as I don't want any of this stuff to fray. Totally fine if you use normal scissors as well. I'll show you how to make them nice and clean. But I'm going to cut out one circle first as that's nice and easy. And then I'll show you how to cut on the fold for the rest of the pieces. If you're worried about this pattern moving while you cut, you can use your pins to pin it onto the fabric. And that way it will be nice and secure. Here's my circle all cut out. I'll put that aside for the first one. And then it's time to cut these pieces on the fold. So I'm literally going to fold the material 
just make sure whatever, whatever way you fold it, say if you have the good sides facing up, you just continue to do it with the good sides facing up. And then I just shift around the fabric so that when I lay this section that says on the fold, it is literally on this part where the fold is. And then I move it so that the length of this overhang is kind of the length of this bit of paper, so therefore there's less waste. And then when that's all pinned in place, you just cut through the two layers of material and then when it unfolds, it will be a nice long headband piece. I'm going to cut out two of these and then I'll move on to the brim section. So now that I've cut out that first piece, that is the same size as the bit of paper, but then when I unfold it, it's now a larger size. So I'm gonna cut out one more and then I'll have two of them. So the brim panels end up being a little bit bigger than the headband section. So I've just shifted that folded material so it now allows for that bigger space. Again, I've laid it so that bit that where it says on the fold sits on the fold pinned it in place and I'm just going to cut around that now and cut out two brim pieces and that means I have everything done in this colour then I'm going to repeat the process where I have one circle, two headbands and two brims with the other pattern material that will then sit on the other double side. So I'll finish this and then go through the process of doing that and then we'll meet at the point where we start assembling the hat. So now that we have those all cut out, we should have 10 pieces all up and five in each color if you're doing different material. We're going to approach this a little bit different compared to what the first version was as we're going to make it double-sided so that you can't really see any seam. We're just going to focus on one of the materials first. If you're just doing this all in one material, just start with two headbands, two brims and one circle and then we'll go from there. And we'll focus on these two headband pieces. So. If you have a good and a bad side, make sure you lay one down with the good side facing up and the other one with the good side facing down so that they're facing each other. And we'll just sew two lines, one down this side section, one down the other side section, and then we'll be up to the next step. When you're sewing, I would suggest sewing as close as you can to the edge as that means it will allow minimal measurement lost in the seams, especially if you're wanting this to be a kind of bigger size. Otherwise, if you know that you want it to be smaller, you can make the seams a little bit larger, say up to half an inch, but I'm literally gonna be doing about a quarter of an inch, which is as close as I can get to the edge. Now that we've sewn down those two edges, when we flip it out, we should have this little circular section. And that is going to be the section that sits around our head like so. Now it's time to attach this onto the circle. You'll notice that there is that slight line that goes outwards. So there will be a longer end, which is my bottom end, and the shorter end, which is that top end for me and I want that shorter end to be the one that attaches onto this circle. So we've got the circle laying down with the good side facing up, and then we've got this so that the good sides are facing inwards and the bad sides are facing out so we can see that seam that we sewed. Figure out which side is the short side and face that downwards so it's now on top of the circle. And then we're just gonna go around and align the edge of the headband with this circle so that the good sides are facing and just pin that all the way around. There is a chance if you have cut these panels a little bit smaller or larger than the pattern or even sewn a larger seam, that this circle might not match the headband piece. That's why it's best to pin it in place. If there are any differences, say if the circle is too big for the headband piece, all you have to do is to shift the headband piece off the edge a little bit and that means it will take up less space and therefore fit on the circle better. And vice versa, if the headband piece is too big for the circle, it might be good just to go back on the machine and just sew that seam that we just sewed a little bit inwards so that it becomes smaller and will fit on the circle better. So just keep going around the edge of this circle, pinning the good side spacing. we've attached it it should look like this so that is all the raw edges showing and then because we've got it pinned we can do a little test sample of what it would look like when we flip it and that will have all the good sides showing once it is sewn and we have that all flipped out now that that's ready to go we just do one sewing line all the way around that circle and that will attach the headband piece onto the circle the 
headband piece and then flip it out and it will look like that. It ends up being like a cute little chef's hat. So the next thing we then do is we add brim section. Again, we'll do the same process that we did with the headband is we lay it so one piece is facing good side up then we face the other one, the good side facing down, and just sew down either of those short edges. And then it is time to attach this onto the rest of the hat. And again, we end up with that circular section. And now it is time to attach it on. So I would get this top section, lay it exactly like that, with the good sides all facing out, and sew that the headband section is kind of standing up like that and then we will grab our newly created brim piece and leave it so that the seams that we just sewed are facing out and then place it over the top so then the good sides of that top section and the good sides of the brim are now all facing and I would suggest aligning those two seams and just start pinning at that raw edge where they both meet until you get all the way around Again, if there is a mismatch of measurements here, that could be from cutting it out at a different size or sewing the seams at different amounts. There's no problem, it's easy to fix. If the headband section is too big for the brim, you can just simply sew that seam so it is a little bit larger, and then that means it will be a smaller circumference and therefore can fit the brim. And if the brim is too big for the headband piece, I would suggest then just getting back on the machine and sewing it so that is a bigger seam and that will make it smaller so therefore it can fit onto there. But we'll just essentially pin around there and then when we turn that piece around, obviously once we sew it, it'll end up looking like that. And then just sew one line all the way around that raw edge. So obviously having it single sided like that is nice and flimsy and the whole idea of adding the double side is that we hide all those ugly seams on the inside and it also gives it extra form and sturdiness. We put this one aside and then we do exactly all the same steps with the other material that we have ready to go. You can either go back and watch the steps that I just followed for this, or if you feel confident enough, go for it yourself. And then we will meet back here and I will show you how to join it all in one double-sided goodness. Now that we have the two separate single-sided hats, it is time to just join them. So we'll grab one so that the good sides are facing out, flip the other one so that the bad sides are facing out, and then just put that inside so that they're aligned with the bad sides both facing each other and now your good sides are all facing out. And then again, match the side seams so that's all nice and clean. And this is where you can decide whether you want to have frayed edges or nice clean edges. So for frayed edges, you literally will just match up these areas and then do those circles around the brim section and leave the edges all open exposed like that. And then if you want a nice clean edge, we'll actually fold both edges of the brims inwards and do that as the first circle and then go from there. And that will kind of be like a clean hidden hem. along I hope that your hat turned out amazing and I would love to see how it did turn out so please tag me at the essentials club on Instagram or even just send me a DM as I'm always so curious to see how you have approached this tutorial and your little unique touches that you've added. I hope it all made sense and I hope I helped clarify anything that might have been confusing in the previous tutorial. There's so many ways that you can alter this to make it suit your style. I hope you have a beautiful day wherever you are and I will see you in the upcoming tutorials. Bye.